when did you first get knowledge of their relationship? I've said over again that I was not, I didn't have any personal information where I could personally say when it started. I've said that time and time again. And, and so I don't, I don't know when the relationship started. A key witness for lawyers fighting to derail the Georgia election interference case against former President Donald Trump and more than a dozen others returned to the witness stand today. The stakes continue to rise for Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis over her romantic relationship with the case's top prosecutor, Nathan Wade. Wade's former law partner and one-time divorce attorney, Terrence Bradley, was back on the stand today. During his testimony a couple weeks back, he initially cited attorney-client privilege when he refused to answer some questions during the two-day hearing. Is any knowledge of Nathan Wade and Fonnie Willis's relationship, romantic relationship beginning while they were both serving as judges, is any knowledge that you have from your own personal knowledge or something that was told to you in furtherance of legal advice? I have no personal knowledge of when it actually happened. Um, I was not there. I do not have any personal knowledge. So okay. I would choose not to answer that question under 1.6. Um, Mr. Bradley, we, we made a distinction earlier. Yes, sir. That it's a bit narrower than that. One point okay. six is incorrect. I have no personal knowledge, Judge. I apologize. Okay. If you were that's not, that's not that's not a problem. The issue is is attorney client privilege. And so whether what you learned, if anything, was during communications with a client. It was. Okay. Now, since that initial testimony, the judge ruled some of Bradley's communications with Wade weren't subject to privilege, which could be pivotal as a defense attorney seek to undermine Willis and Wade's claims about when their relationship began. When Bradley returned to the stand today, he reiterated he didn't know when Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade began their romantic relationship. I'm going to just go straight to where we left off before. Um, Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade were in a romantic relationship, correct? Correct. And um, it began at the time that they were both municipal court judges, correct? I Objection, Your Honor, based on privilege. That would be the attorney privilege. Okay, overruled. I do not have knowledge of it starting um, or when it started. Um, Terrence, you told me that it started when they were both municipal court judges, though, correct? That is incorrect. Um, you never confirmed in writing that it was instead of magistrate court, it was in municipal court when they were started dating? If you're speaking of the text message, you can go to that text message and you can read that text message and I will explain the text message to you. But you and I did not have a conversation about when it started. You asked a compound question of magistrate court versus I mean, you, you said it was magistrate court municipal, mag, I mean, you said uh, mag, magistrate court conference, I'm sorry. Um, and then you asked another question. I said, no, municipal court, nothing else. I'm referring to a different um, conversation. I asked you, do you think it started before she hired him? And I'm gonna object, this was covered uh, in the previous hearing where um, Mr. Bradley said he had no personal knowledge of the exact text that Ms. Um, Merchant is speaking of and actually used uh, in, a, to, in an attempt to refresh his recollection. And he explained exactly um, what he's explaining here before the court. So this is uh, repetitive and unnecessary. And so I would object to asked and answered and, and relevance at this point. All right, uh, perhaps we'll get there. But I think first, Ms. Merchant has the right to draw his attention to the exact potentially inconsistent statement. Thank you, Judge. Do you remember knowing Ms. Willis prior to her taking office as the DA? I had very little contact with Ms. Willis. Um, I knew her um, through my business of coming down to Fulton, if that's what you're asking. Yes. You knew her through the business. Um, so had you had met her prior to your contract? I'm going to object to relevance at this point as to why we're here today. Sure. Judge, he doesn't remember much of anything right now and so i'm trying to create a timeline to hopefully piece this together all right well um I, i'm not seeing really the, the likelihood that that's going to have any success I'll, I'll let you ask a few more questions but if he doesn't have a date then i don't know that you're going to be able to create one today okay. 
Now, Bradley testified today that he was speculating when he told defense attorney Ashley Merchant details of Willis and Wade's relationship, but he cleared that up when he mentioned he was referring to money related to his law firm. Attorney Merchant then accused Terrence Bradley's lawyers of coaching him while he was on the stand. Did you have any reason to lie? I don't know if speculation is lying, but I'm... Well, let, let me just... Show me where in this text it says you're speculating. You didn't text. ask me if I was speculating or guessing. I didn't ask you, but tell me if it says anywhere here that no, it's speculation. If this is the same one that you just showed me, it does not. And you're welcome if you need to to look at your text. Um, is there anywhere in here that indicates that you didn't have knowledge of no. the relationship? No, I'm going to object. The line of questioning your honor directed counsel to uh, explore is where he got the knowledge. He's explored that. He said it's speculation, and he didn't get it from any source other than his own speculation. Sure. So I, think I, I think we're flushing that out, and uh, uh, I think it's her right to have a little leeway on this if he's an adverse witness. Thank you, Judge. And Judge, these speaking objections are clearly coaching the witness because he's regurgitating. Your Honor, I, have, I, I <laughs> object and take offense to that comment. I'm objecting based on the law, and I'm, and I'm making a record for the court. Right. Um, so I, I, I take offense to that comment. It's not the case. All right. Well, uh, I think we can start with uh, objection, the grounds, and the rule number. And then if I need more, I'll ask. Thank you. All right. What did Nathan tell you about the relationship? Objection. Hearsay. Nathan has testified. It's not yeah. hearsay. It's still hearsay. It's an out-of-court statement being brought in for the truth of the matter asserted. So hearsay. Judge. Right. Yeah, this would be for impeachment by contradiction, <coughs> which would Thank be you. an exception to the hearsay rule, and admissible as substantive evidence, and the privilege issues are overruled. Thank you, Judge. Well, I think he just overruled the privilege objection, but, but we don't know when he's talking about. So we've already established that December 2018 right. was the day of the privilege. Sure. And that's something I covered in the in-camera hearing. And I'm, based on what he told me in that in-camera hearing, uh, I don't believe any statements to this effect were covered by privilege. And Judge, I just want for the record, because sometimes the record doesn't reflect where people are looking, and that when I ask a question, Mr. Bradley is looking at Mr. Wade and his lawyer to wait for them to object, and they're clearly interacting somehow in the court. So I just want the ref record to reflect that because it wouldn't otherwise. After multiple objections on grounds of hearsay and speculation by attorney Merchant, Bradley maintained that he doesn't have personal knowledge of trips that Willis and Wade took. He didn't have a date of when the Wade-Willis relationship began and admitted he didn't want to testify. You and Mr. Wade were friends as well as business partners, correct? We were, we were friends um, in the sense of I've known him for um, years. Um, yes, we were friends. And um, you definitely did not want to come and be a witness in this case, correct? That is correct. Now, questioning was then turned over to Trump's lawyer, Steve Sado, and Bradley acknowledged text exchanges with defense attorney Merchant, where he previously told Merchant the relationship started before Willis hired Wade to lead the election interference case. If I may help you out, let's talk just about that part of the motion that deals with the relationship between uh, the district attorney Willis mm -hmm. and Mr. Wade. Mm -hmm. When you reviewed that, you knew that she was that Miss no, Merchant. I, no, I did not know that she was relying on me to for any any um, relying on me for any accuracy other than um, what was put in there. If about there was, the seventy four thousand, Mr. Bradley, if there was something patently false in that motion, you would have told Miss Merchant, wouldn't you? I can't say that I would or wouldn't have. I don't, I don't know what I would have told Ms. Merchant. If there was something pat, patently speculative, you would have told Ms. Merchant, wouldn't you? I don't know what I would have told Ms. Merchant. I, she asked me, was it accurate? Um, we were discussing the 74000 that was left out. Then Trump's attorneys raised the possibility that Willis and Wade lied under oath. Mr. Bradley, when you spoke, when you communicated with Ms. Merchant, 
Did you tell her any lies about Mr. Wade and Miss Willis's relationship? Did I lie to Miss? That's a simple I mean, question, Mr. Bradley. You're a lawyer. Did you lie to Miss Merchant when you told her facts about Mr. Wade and Miss <clears throat> Willis's relationship? Not that I recall. I, I don't recall. Um... I mentioned earlier that I speculated on some things. Um, I've testified to what I did know, uh, so I, I, I can't recall whether or not I... No. With several defense lord lawyers waiting their turn to fire off questions to Bradley, the judge who reportedly was under the weather was showing very little patience during the hearing. But for most lawyers today, the word of the day was speculation. Bradley said he had no answer as to why he speculated about the timing of the Wade Willis relationship. After a brief recess, Bradley was then asked about his current relationship with Nathan Wade, and he responded that they haven't spoken in years. When was the last time you spoke to Mr. Wade? I'm spoken to Mr. Wade personally in a year, two years actually, when I left the firm. Miss Willis. I never. Um, my interaction with Miss Willis was never um, where I would pick up the phone and talk to her, or that she would, um, or anything like that. So you, you didn't hang out with Miss Willis? You didn't have a personal relationship with her? No, I, I never had a personal relationship. I mentioned before that I went to a dinner that was after she um, was elected um, that was at a steakhouse, but it was some 75 to 100 people there. So you knew of her. You just didn't have a, a business relationship or a personal relationship with her, or at least a close one. I knew of her from my, she was in the DA's office and I had criminal cases, but I did not personally know her, no. And not having known her, not really hanging out with her, uh, you've got a contract from her office. I'm gonna just object as to cumulative, asked and answered throughout the- All right, Mr. Kershaw, I think we covered this ground on the 16th about the contracts. And do you have a, are you going somewhere else with this? I am, Judge. If you give me a little latitude, I'll right. tie it right now. Okay, you may proceed. You got a contract from the office, not knowing or having a good relationship or a good working business relationship with Ms. Willis. That's correct. Uh, that's because Nathan Wade steered that contract to you. I don't know how it came about, but it was presented to me um, at the office about the contract, correct? Terrence Bradley was later dismissed from the witness stand after testifying for a little more than two hours. As for what's next, closing arguments are set to take place on Friday. Now, keep in mind, if the judge rules to disqualify Fonnie Willis from the Trump election interference case, another attorney would be appointed to take over the case against the former president and 14 of his associates, or they could dismiss the case altogether. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.